July 9th, 10.13 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It is the second episode of the day. Me and JP and Santiago brought to you earlier our preview of 2017 for boxing. And right now, it is me flying solo. Yes, I'm sorry there's no other co-hosts. But I am going to preview UFC 207, which is tomorrow night, I believe at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. I can look that up really fast. But I'm basically just going to run down the card as fast as possible because it is late. And I'm just basically just going to give my picks of the fight and break down the fights individually, of course. And that's... There may be some fights I skip over. Not skip over, but go quickly over. Like a... Antonio Carlos Jr. versus Marvin Vittori. Like, I'm picking Vittori via submission. Because that's usually a track record. But, like, what's the really point of that? Like, talking about that fight that much. But anyways, it is the... Re- not rematch. It is the coming back, quote, unquote, of Ronda Rousey after her brutal, brutal knockout of Holly Holm, uh, by Holly Holm. And Amanda Nunez, somebody that I've always been sort of a fan of and always been high of, especially since she started training full-time after the Kat Singano loss. And she's coming off a knockout win over Misha Tate at UFC 200. So I think this fight in particular is interesting. But we're going to get to that at the very end. And then we have Dominic Cruz versus Cody Garbrandt. And those two have just been at war lately. Cody Garbrandt stormed off a dual interview on FS1, I believe, and tried to get into the studio where Dominic Cruz was. They almost had a scuffle at the weigh-in today. It's been crazy. And that fight is probably the fight I'm most excited for, so I can't wait to talk about that. We got Tarek Safadine versus Dong Young Kim. I think that's a very intriguing fight because Tarek Safadine was a guy that I thought was really going to go places coming out of Strike Force, and due to injuries, a a couple setback losses to guys like Rory McDonald, he never really got to the upper echelon of the division, in my opinion, and beat them. And it's going to be interesting to see if he beats a Dong Young Kim who's kind of been out of action for a while. So I'm very, very curious. And it, it, by the way, it is at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, in case you didn't know. And then we have TJ Dillashaw versus John Lineker. That's a very intriguing style matchup. I can't wait to talk about that one. Ray Borg versus Luis Smoka. Ray Borg did miss weight, by the way. And that will be the pay-per-view opener. And that is the pay-per-view card. And in the undercard, we have Alex Garcia versus Mike Pyle. Tim Means versus Alex Oliveira. Johnny Hendricks versus Neil Magny. Antonio Carlos Jr. versus Marvin Vittori. And Brandon Thatch versus Nico Price. I do not believe that that undercard is the right order. Just so you know. But basically, we're going to start from the bottom and up. So Brandon Thatch versus Nico Price. Now Brandon Thatch was an interesting pro- prospect because I think, like most people, I thought he had the striking ability that was really going to go far. He was a big welterweight. He was in a good camp. I thought he was really going to acclimate well to the division, even though it's a tough division. And he just never really did. You know, he had. He had a loss to Ben Henderson, and I was like, all right, like, that was forgivable, Ben Henderson. And that was a better version of Ben Henderson as well. And then he lost to guys like Sehar Brazati, and it's just like, I don't know what Brandon Thatch is doing, because he, he lost to Brazati via grappling and striking. Like, he lost in every facet of that fight. So, I, I don't know. I'm not completely sold. On Brandon Thatch's ability to win this fight, because I'm I'm not sold on him mentally being in it. I believe he's on a three-fight losing streak. Now, 
I am picking him to win, probably by knockout, because Nico Price has nothing to write home about. That's just the God honest truth. Now, let's move on to Antonio Carlos Jr. versus Marvin Vittori. I'm picking Vettori to win via submission. He usually wins by submission, usually either a choke, either a rear naked choke, triangle choke, a guillotine choke. I expect him to get one over someone that got even knocked out by it, like a Daniel Kelly, who's awful. So Antonio Carlos Jr. is just trash, in my opinion. So Marvin Vettori is going to win. Now, Johnny Hendricks versus Neil Magny. That's interesting. And I forgot to mention that Johnny Hendricks also missed weight. So, I'm picking Neil Magny to win. And I was kind of debating it. I wanted to wait till the weigh-in. And like everyone else, uh, I wasn't that surprised that Johnny Hendricks missed weight. You know, this isn't, I think this is the third time, you know, so that this isn't, the first time, we're, we're, nothing's new. Neil Magny's a tall, langy, welterweight. I think he definitely will be able to put a jab out there, stifle him. If he get, if Neil Magny gets past the first round, I definitely see him winning like a 29-28 decision. Just mixing him takedowns, clinching him up. And even if Neil Magny gets hurt, Neil Magny is the type of guy to recover pretty well. And he can hurt guys as well you know he hurt Hector Lombard so I I can see Neil Magny taking out the fading Johnny Hendricks Tim Means versus Alex Oliveira I'm not big I'm not a big Alex Oliveira guy I like I, I was never sold on him I mean I was never really sold on Tim Means either I'm picking Means to win though and he's probably gonna win in classic Tim Means fashion being the aggressive swarmer, working off the clinch, elbows, punches, knees. So, I think Tim Means probably either can get like a first or a second on knockout. Alex Garcia versus Mike Pyle. This is the one of the worst fights on the card. It's probably the second worst fight on the card. I'm picking Pyle to win. And let's just move on because, like, I I, I really have nothing to say. I think Alex Garcia is not. Good at anything he does. You know, he gets by. And Mike Pyle is so old at this point and so long in the tooth in this sport. You know, I think his chin isn't there anymore. But he can still knock people out. He can still lock up a submission. So I'm picking Pyle to probably win a decision. But it's going to be... It's going to be one of those split decision, 29-28. Awful, controversial, but yet no one really cares because it was an awful fight. It's going to be one of those fights. And then we have Ray Borg versus Luis Smoka beginning on the pay-per-view card. With Ray Borg missing weight, plus the size difference, and I think both guys being scramblers by nature, I think Luis Smoka is probably going to have a better time. He's probably going to lock up a... Like a second round submission. That's my that's my guess. If he doesn't lock that up, he's probably gonna win decision. Then we have T J Dillashaw versus John Lineker. T J Dillashaw his ability similar to like a Dominic Cruz to use his superior footwork to always be either A out of range or B, so off the center line that his opponents miss, his, miss their shots. And then based off of that, and just their, and like for T.J. Dillashaw, for example, his athleticism, he's able to get back into range and to set up his angles off of that and to really hurt guys, land good shots. So I think... T.J. Dillashaw is definitely going to win by decision, mainly because John Linker is a very durable guy. I don't, I don't think Dillashaw is going to finish him. Excuse me. If he does finish him, it's ba- it's going to be like off of a head kick or something like that. But I just I don't see it happening. I see John Linker having his moments. Sorry, I'm, I am semi sick. I, I do apologize, but I think Dillashaw. 
He's going to pepper him, use his superior footwork and head movement to slip shots, get out of range, come back into, dart back into range, and land like two shots, three shots, dart back out, and then probably win on points. But it's definitely going to be an entertaining chess match, and I, I, I can't wait to see it. Uh, I think John Lineker is the type of guy that if he were to land something and then follow up with a flurry that just puts Teacher Dillashaw away, I wouldn't be surprised. So I, I, I don't know. I do not know what the betting lines are, but if they're pretty wide for John Lineker being the underdog, I wouldn't say don't jump on it. And then we have. Tarek Safadine versus Dong Yong Kim. This fight's intriguing because if Dong Yong Kim was fighting like he did a few years back before he became this brawler without any sort of defense, when he was just a grappler with a dominant top game, I think he probably would win this bout. But because he's transformed into this brawler that has Zero defense, zero head movement. A a guy that comes straight down the center line. I believe a technical striker, such as Tarek Safadine, will be able to just pick him apart all night. So I think he's probably going to win on points, unless he lands a big shot that hurts him. Because unless he lands a, a shot, like a spinning back elbow or you know stuff like that, we've seen that has hurt Dong on Kim. I I don't see you finishing him. You know, like Carlos Condit had a flying knee knockout and then a bunch of punches after that to actually put him away. So Tarek Safety would really have to land something big. But I could see it. But I see him more likely winning on points. Dominic Cruz versus Cody Garbrandt. Now I'm intrigued because I think Cody Garbrandt could win this fight. And I feel like this is close to a 50-50 fight. Mainly because Dominic Cruz doesn't shy away from the inside. Dominic Cruz likes to use his footwork to confuse guys almost. He almost loves dancing within his opponent's range and slipping shots. You can tell he... You can tell he does it for a reason, but he does it. And he, he he's not always outside of his opponent's range. And his hands are usually down. So I can see I can see Dominic Cruz coming in, trying to land a couple shots, and then trying to le- exit out the side door, and then Cody Garbrandt landing like left hook and knock him out. Now, is that what I'm going for? No, I'm picking Dominic Cruz. Why? Because Dominic Cruz has the best footwork in MMA. And I know that's such an overstated statement. And it's it's something that just talked about ad nauseum, but it's true. And it's something that always deserves to be mentioned. Dominic Cruz... Dominic Cruz is... A, is able to evade shots at a at a rate and an ability that I haven't seen since like a prime Anderson Silva in terms of MMA. And I think that that's something that really doesn't get talked about. Like the greatness of his defense. Like he, there's times where TJ Dillashaw or Uriah Faber should have landed shots, but they didn't. You know why? Because Dominic Cruz thought three advances, three moves ahead of him. And I think Dominic Cruz, especially if he survives the first round and a half, is going to be able to mix up his takedowns because that's what he does very well. And especially since Cody Garbrandt throws lazy kicks, I think Dominic Cruz is going to be able to counter those lazy kicks with takedowns, be able to tire him out. Because I don't think Cody Garbrandt's ever faced a wrestler of Dominic Cruz's ability in terms of in the ring. He may have been sparring, but that doesn't count, in my opinion. 
And then the main event, Ronda Rousey. And I'm not going to get into the the media blackout and her her statements or her alleged statements against the, the MMA media. I'm going to basically just talk about the fight. And then we're going to call it early, an early night. It's late. We have... We have some boxing later. We have the Enua Inoa. I'm probably butchering that name. But the guy that everyone wants to fight, Roman Gonzalez, he is fighting. Plus we have, hold on, I have the, I have the card up here. Akira Yagishi versus Wetawa Baspian. And then Ryota Moroda versus Bruno Sandoval. Especially watch out for that Ryota Moroda fight. Because Moroda is a young, undefeated Japanese middleweight prospect. And the middleweight division needs more prospects in boxing. But anyways, back to MMA. Amanda Nunez, I think... It's probably going to win this fight. And like most people, I think it's probably going to be in the first round via knockout. And it's mainly because Ronda Rousey... Ronda Rousey wants to get on the inside, right? Everyone knows that. And Holly Holm was able to not let her get on the inside without two things happening. Her eating a shot and Holly Holm escaping out the side door. Now, Amanda Nunez doesn't have that second one. Amanda Nunez doesn't have the ability to, in my opinion, work the outside game like a Holly Holm does, purely because of the level of striking ability. Now, if she does do that, I wouldn't be shocked, but I don't think she has that in her. So I feel like Amanda Nunez is going to get tied up eventually within the clinch. Her submission game and her overall grappling game isn't bad, so I don't think she's going to get washed. But then again, Ronda Rousey has a a Mike Tyson right hook in terms of grappling when it comes to that arm bar. So if Ronda Rousey is able to lock up a submission within the first round or in the second round, I wouldn't be shocked. But I feel like she's going to get tagged with that right hand because Amanda Nunez, in my opinion, is the the biggest hitter at 135. Now, Ronda Rousey does a couple things. She she never has her hands in the proper defensive position when it comes to bo- when it comes to boxing, and because Ronda Rousey obviously doesn't have the le- the kicking ability to actually set up a kicking game, you, you you can work a boxing game on her and hit her because she will always be hittable. Her defense is atrocious. So I feel like Amanda Nunez is going to land a 1-2, stun Ronda Rousey, and then follow up with the combination and put her out. Probably within the first round. Now, this card overall is pretty good. I I am super excited to see. I probably can have some friends over and watch it. It it will this is pretty much it for this show. Uh it is late here, it's ten thirty PM. I am tired. I still have to watch this Inua fight guard. So it's gonna be a long night for me. Wish me luck because I am sick. And I hope you all have a great day and a great New Year's Eve. And I will have a show later on tomorrow morning with my UK correspondent, Alex Huckerbee. And we're going to have a good old time. It's going to be at 9 a.m. It won't be live, but it will be probably just like an hour long show. So it will probably be out 10.30, 11-ish for, for all of you guys to enjoy. And then plus you obviously can you obviously probably wake up and see this show and enjoy that as well until that show is uploaded and then you all have a great new year's eve enjoy peace